All right, welcome to day three where we're gonna drill it down. So let's recap real quick. Day one, we focused on creating this like dream wish list of habits we felt like were incorporated into our life. We included them in the workbook. Day two, we took those habits and whittled it down to a list of five that we felt like we really wanted to rock and three that we felt like were the most attainable so we could have an easy win. And we used the workbook to kind of figure out like, why do we want this habit or what is this habit rather? Why do we want it? But more importantly, how is it going to make us feel? So today we drill down the single biggest habit that we feel like we need to move ahead in to change our life. So I want to tell a little bit of a story. So if you don't know, I run the Feel Amazing Naked program, which is a hybrid group program where I help women feel amazing naked. So a lot of our work is on food and fitness, but the vast majority of our work is on mindset and habit formation, just like you're working on here. I also work with clients one-to-one. -one, and no matter what client I am working with, it's quite frequent that they're like, I know I want to do all these things, so I'm going to, I'm going to work out this week, I'm going to blah, 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 and they kind of brain dump all these things, and I'm like, whoop, back the truck up. We're going to get one thing mastered. We're going to focus on inclusion of habits and get really dang good on at one thing, because as we whittle down and work on getting really good at one thing, it's going to reveal the root cause of why we can't hold all the things together. This, I always tell the clients, like, I'm waiting for this moment. I'm waiting for your A plus student status to fade away so the juicy stuff can be revealed. The work I do is root cause analysis. We all know what to do on paper, but why can't we maintain consistency? And it's in that moment where I see women start to struggle and life happens that all this stuff really shows me what the root cause has been that's been keeping them stuck. And oftentimes it's mindset, belief work or just the fact that they don't even know how to make themselves a priority. So maybe those weren't part of your habits and maybe you're like, oh shoot, I need to go back. So regardless, if you feel like you need to go back, pause, go back, redo that habit and come back to me. But let's keep moving ahead to today's uh, content. So I'm gonna bring up the workbook. Okay, so day three really is helping you fully show up and you are going to pick one thing. If you've never read the book, One Thing, it's pretty amazing. It's focusing on one thing to get like a desired outcome. In my own business and in my health, I focus on one thing each year. And there's lots of little tentacles that reach from it. But when I keep my eye on the prize for this one thing, it's amazing how powerful things shift and we don't even know it. So your job now is to really deeply reflect on like, what is that one thing? What is the one of those three? So you've whittled down from five to well, list to five to three, and now we're gonna go one. Then for that one thing, you are going to do this complete activity, which is today's take home. And you are going to take it a step further and identify that habit in full detail. Like list the steps even that it might be that you need to accomplish this habit. I don't want just eat healthy. Like there's a lot of crap that has to happen for you to eat healthy. So maybe it's just creating a grounding day process. Maybe it is working out three times a week or one time a week right now. Maybe it is building balanced plates. Maybe it is eating more protein. Maybe it's journaling every day or five times a week. Whatever that habit is that's going to bring what you feel is the outcome you need, we're going to get really freaking crystal clear on it by completing these steps. Day two is, or step two is, how are you going to implement that habit? So let's take the message of journaling and I'm going to bring myself off stop share because I think this is a really great example. Often I'll have clients, uh, journaling and meditation are both powerful tools that I teach in my uh, practice, it's my coaching practice. Mindfulness and those components completely bleeds into life and the overwhelm we feel and being more mindful around food. So journaling is a habit many people out there are mastering, but specifically women want to have this habit in their life, but they don't know how. So when we're filling out this worksheet, it's what is the habit in detail? Not just I want to journal, but I will journal three times a week after I drink my morning coffee or when I drink my morning coffee. So there is a habit in detail. So how am I going to implement this habit step? Well, I'm gonna take my journal and I'm gonna set it by my coffee pot every morning so I'm reminded. Or I'm gonna set a reminder in my phone so that at 
after I wake up and have coffee, I am ready to rock and journaling is there. I'm going to then, you know, after I set my journal out, I'm going to pour my coffee. I'm going to sit down at the table. Maybe you're going to talk about how you're going to journal or what you're going to journal. Are you going to use prompts? And then how you're going to replace that journal right back in its spot. How long is it going to take you? How many days or how frequently will you do it? And most important, um, what's going to be the cue? Step three is one that's often missed is people say, I want to do this habit, but then they don't have anything in their life to remind them of it. When I do workshops on habits, we talk a lot about like a habit only happens if there's a cue, something to trigger you to make that habit happen. So you've got to brainstorm. What is that cue going to be? Is it a reminder in your phone? Is it pouring coffee? Is it insert whatever that thing is? And then lastly, it's how do I want to feel when I do this habit? Powerful. If there's not like an emotion there, there's an other that's going to remind you like journaling makes me feel peace. Journaling makes me feel grounded. So whatever that looks like for you. Now, this might feel like a little bit mm, like I need, I, I'm, I'm past this. But the answer is no, you're not. If you were past this, then you would have mastered this habit. And likely what's happening is you're looking for sexier stuff that's going to take you where you want to go instead of the most simple basic habit formation pieces that I am including here. The magic is in consistency. The magic is in mastery. And when we, how we achieve mastery is by repetition. Over and over and over, we do the same thing because we start to see the impact it has on our life. So I really encourage you, don't skip these steps. They're there for a reason. And we're gonna talk about why you may, might want to print this sheet for 12, 12 times so that you have it for every habit that you're going to master in 2020, because I believe in you. And we're gonna create that plan so you know what those habits are already ahead on day five. So today's activity is for you to drill down really looking at the habit that you're going to start with, that number one thing that you feel like is gonna be your highest leverage action and take you where you want to go. And then I would love for you to share in the group, like what is that one habit? What are you gonna do to get there? What aha moment did you feel or come away with in today's thread? And I am here to answer any questions you have as well. So cheers to day three and drilling it down. <laughs>